So welcome back to human resource management, or as many people are starting to say now, um, human capital management. Uh, we are focused today on benefits. And um, because it is the end of the term, I'd like to try to talk about benefits and safety all together with uh, all details related to human capital management, um, especially knowing that there's big changes going on that are impacting your lives. A lot of people were, uh, they may think of employee safety uh, as one thing, and they may think of employee benefits um, all together, but most people are thinking of those with outdated models. They're thinking of things that have, <coughs> excuse me, uh, they're thinking of um, benefits, for example, that were popular and appreciated by people 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. What are some changes happening now in your generation that will impact you and definitely need to impact consideration of safety and benefits. So we have 11 people online. Chad, will you be able to take a guess at that? Chad? Um, Umaza? Yeah. try to tell the world what aspect of employee benefits, what aspect of employee safety and health has been changing. And it might be different than it was 50 years ago. And it's definitely going to be impacting you. You need to think of this. You're reading textbooks. We have articles. A lot of these details have been designed before you were born. But things have changed. What has changed? My question is, what has changed? Yes, Solinda, thank you. The epidemic, uh, sorry, the pandemic. The, the pan, yes, the pandemic has changed some things of human resource management with benefits and health and safety. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Coronavirus, the, the pandemic has made sure um, everybody is changing things. Everybody is generally has been working online for about two years. Um, what else related to benefits that will impact you and aspects of work, more aspects of work? That's a good start. Any other ideas and suggestions? That's, that's a huge one that has changed many things. What else has changed with that? The idea of working from home because of the health and safety issues, working from home because of the pandemic. Digitalization in general, that people have different uh, motivations now. They can work from everywhere. So maybe they don't only want good money, but also they want to be happy and um, love what they do. Uh, yes, uh, a lot of millennials, Generation uh, Z, they are saying they don't want the same pay, they don't want the same salary, they don't want the same benefits that companies started more than 50 years ago. So 50-year-old ideas don't match the newer generation. Yes, Celinda, what, what were you saying? Celinda was some, saying something? Oh, yes. Companies used to give all workers materials, basically 
one set shared by many people, for example, inside a common office. But now, since people are working from home, companies need to start thinking about how people at home can get the access to the work equipment, like printers or even pens and paper, um, fax machines. Yes, fax machines are still used, um, and, and other things. What else? What? What um, is related? It's more popular to um, that that like men and women work. So when when couples want to have children, then it's becoming more important that you have flexible work times because both partners are working, and um, it's becoming more popular that both partners have their time with the children. So that's that's becoming a thing. Like. Uh, yeah, some some free time for the dads also, and flexible work times so that both partners can care for the child. Good companies are starting to change the idea of um, benefits and uh, aspects of, of contracts where somebody a family has a baby or somebody has a baby. In the past, it was generally just the mother could take time off. Now many companies are providing time for the mother and the father, or either or, you can select those. Yes, that is changing it. And the idea of people being able to um, focus more on family, that has been changing quite a lot just in the last few months. Any ideas about big companies, HRM aspects? What is some of the biggest things that have been changing just in the last year? In 2021, not 2020, but mostly 2021, what are some of the biggest aspects of human resource management, human capital management that's been changing, especially in the United States? Setting records. Huge hint. What type of new records are being sent? Set, not sent. So we can go through, we'll talk about, good, I'm, I'm getting you guys, I see some people are thinking about it. So um, we're going to make sure that we are um, talking about what are employee benefits and defined, defined benefits uh, packages. Let me get this out of the way. The idea of a pension plan, defi a defined contribution pension plan, cash balance plans. There's a variety of things that we can talk about. Oops. Um, there's a variety of things like HMOs, um, uh, lots of details. Most of this is related to United States, what's going on. But let's take a look at definitely in United States. This is news um, that AI gave me this morning. And so this is a news story talking about the great resignation. The, uh, the Great Depression, 1929, that's when a lot of people lost their jobs. Companies couldn't afford to pay them, so the companies fired lots of people. Well, it's not the Great Depression now, it's the Great Resignation. What are we talking about here? And the details are on the slide, so just go ahead and take a look at that. Yes, most uh, a lot of employees are quitting now. And so we see here, this quit rate is at an all time high. The share of workers who voluntarily quit their jobs reached the record level in September. Um, so this is from 2002 up to 2021, 2022, you're seeing it's much higher than average. And if we read some of these details, can I get a um, volunteer to, read some of this information? So I can read it? Sure. Thank you. So finding good employees has always been a challenge, but these days it's harder than ever, and it is unlikely to improve anytime soon. The so-called quit grade, the share of workers who voluntarily leave their work, 
hit a record of 3% in September 21, according to the latest data available from the Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Radius, uh, the rate was highest in the leisure and hospitality sector, where 6.4% of workers quit their job in September. In all, 20.2 million workers left their employers from May through September. Good, thank you. So this, this idea of in the past, people were programmed in their mind, they have to do whatever they can to keep the company happy. They were afraid of losing the jobs. In 1929, the Great Depression, getting a job was super, super hard. Now, why are things changed? The world has completely gone the opposite direction. Yes, Celinda has an idea. Uh, people are thinking about themselves first. Oh, okay, good. Um, I think, is there someone talking? Yes, go ahead. Um, I think one of the biggest reasons why people are quitting um, after the pandemic was the money provided from the government. I heard that a lot of people, um, they are getting money from the government if they don't have a job. So even though they had a job, um, they know that they will get quite a lot of money uh, from the government if they don't have a job. So they started to quit it so that they can get the money even though they're not working. Um, that's a very good point. In 1929, the government wasn't giving a lot of attractive benefits to people. Um, now, the government in the United States <laughs> is, is uh, creating... How many trillion, more than a trillion dollars the government is using to invest back in the country? More than ever, ever, ever before. And they're giving a lot of that to the workers. Yes, the idea of if you have a coronavirus issue, the, the government will pay you extra to continue to, to survive, like uh, unemployment type benefits. And so people are taking advantage of that opportunity. That's one aspect, yes. Any other considerations? This is a good uh, idea. The idea of people are, are quitting jobs because they already have some government money just to survive with the coronavirus. When I came to Korea, the Korean government gave me some funds. The Korean government gave me even food and drinks and stuff when we were quarantined in home. Um, okay, some more, more people are able to uh, work online and more people are concerned about their health, worrying about their health. They don't want to be around other people. It, yes, it does look like a I think, are we in the fourth wave or fifth wave of coronavirus? It is still increasing now. Uh, yes, there's a lot of worry about that. Good. Did I hear somebody else in the class talking about uh, another point? Somebody online wanted? I can say something more. Okay. I'm, I don't remember which um, like research I was doing, but I remember that after the corona happened, um, a lot of people started to seek for uh, new hobbies, and uh, which means people started to look for um, some activities they can do during their leisure times. And they find out that um, some activities can make them their life more uh, fruitful. So they want uh, to companies to have some kind of welfare so that they can do that activities, but companies that didn't have that welfare system. So they decided to quit. Yes, good. Hua, well, while we are talking about this, um, Hua, can you open 
the file that's talking about making passive income, many different ideas for workers to make extra passive income, new development opportunities. Pa, are you, you, know, you understand the file I'm talking about? Uh, yes, I'm trying to look for it. Thanks. Um, before we start talking about that, another aspect is as countries become more developed, they are moving away from farming and more and more people are starting to work for service jobs. As you can see here, in recent years, the service sector made almost 90% of all jobs in the United States and 80% uh, of economic growth is coming from people that are just doing a service. And a lot of these services do not have to be um, done in person. They can be done online. So people are seeing the idea of the old fashioned HRM is they have a big building and they have some punch card where when you go to the building early in the morning, you have to take a card and punch it in what time I arrive. And then as you're leaving, what time you leave. That idea that people have to come to an old fashioned building and number two, the company checks the time you're working. Both of those things have changed. A lot of companies see you don't have to go to a building, number one. And number two, the old way companies thought good working just meant you had to be at that building for many hours. And it's shown that you don't have to be there many hours. Some workers have very high productivity. They can get more done in one hour than some other workers with low productivity can do all week. And so you, you don't have to go to a building. You don't have to punch in a time card. They're gay. Companies and people are starting to focus just on the project anywhere in the world. And if anybody's a musician, the idea of a short-term musician gig is getting more and more popular. So that gig economy is becoming uh, pretty important. So uh, great. Here, um, Pua is sharing a file that's talking about um, not just the idea of going to a building to make money and going to a building, checking in early in the morning and checking out at night. That whole idea has really, really changed. And you should be aware of it. Uh, what we're talking about is um, what Warren Buffett says, basically, you should make money in your sleep. Um, many people work nine to five, uh, five or six days a week, 50 weeks per year for 50 years. And then after their whole life, then they start realizing that I still don't have enough money to live my dreams. I still, you know, my dream was to go to Paris. My dream was to go to Berlin or London or Buenos Aires or, or Seoul, Korea or Toronto. They wanted to travel their whole life and they thought they could do it after they retire. But many, many, many people, they work their whole life and then they start retiring. Then they realize that, no, they still don't have enough money to do that. And so they're starting to realize um, more about earning, more about being your boss. Companies make a heck of a lot of money, but are they paying that to the actual workers? So what are some ways that you can be your own boss? And specifically, there's two types of pay or compensation. There's active pay where you work Every hour you're working and sweating and maybe cutting your fingers, doing things, you get paid an hour, you get paid some money for doing that. That's the active income. But a lot of people are seeing the wealthy people don't have that. If the most successful people in the world don't have active pay, why are you supposed to be focusing on it? Why is most of the world focused on what the successful don't focus on. So what is the successful people in the world focused on? 
passive income. What is passive income? What is an example of passive income? Anybody, anybody here have passive income yet? So writing poems or writing books, yes. If you write a book, write a poem, and you sell that poem or sell that book, whoever buys that book, as long as you're smart with the contracts, you get a little bit of money every time somebody buys it. Yes. And so the more people do it, the more you get paid, and you can eventually live off of that. Some writers are very, very wealthy just from good writing. Yes. Writing homes? Oh, renting homes. Yes, even better. Um, yes, renting homes. Having a building and renting it out to somebody else where they pay every month a certain amount is super, super smart. And I'm still kind of shocked. I've been a professor for uh, a management professor teaching um, management, teaching investment, finance for over 20 years. And so far, almost no universities focus on that. Most universities focus on working for a company. Most universities teach about how you can make this active income. Most universities do not teach what the most successful people are doing, which is with, rent, with uh, real estate. And so what we just heard is the idea of getting real estate. It is often popular and possible that you can get the real estate for a very small amount of the price. In Canada, it's very easy to get it for 5% of the cost of the house. You only need 5% for, for buying it. And then you can borrow the rest and the customers or the tenants continue to pay to buy that for you. And there's two benefits with it. Those two benefits, many people confuse. The idea that the customer, the, the tenant will pay to buy the house, that's one benefit. And then the house will grow in value. In Toronto, the houses are growing about 20% every year. If you have a $100,000 house, next year, it's going to be $120,000. Actually, in Toronto, the houses, regular houses are more than a million dollars. So it's $200,000 increase just sitting there doing nothing. Plus the idea that you can get some properties where the customers, the tenants, pay you more than the amount you have to pay the bank. So you can live off of that. Uh, there, there are several different details, but yes, let's focus on some of those things. Um, professor? Go ahead. Do you, want to... um, do you have to pay like uh, more taxes if you have uh, more than two houses in Toronto? Um, <laughs> that's an accounting question. A, sometimes yes, sometimes no. You, a, a lot of, <laughs> sorry, I'm gonna try to make this short. Um, accounting is usually taught also in an outdated old fashioned thinking style. The idea of how much salary you get, and you that's set they usually say your expenses are usually fixed and so you have the amount of money you get minus the expenses and whatever is left over you have taxes to pay for but real estate and entrepreneurs usually know that if you have anything left over in your business you can use that leftover to put back into your business to grow it even more so you don't have to pay taxes, right? So that's one aspect. And the idea that some places they're saying they have to continuously improve, they have to do construction, or they have to develop it even more. They can say that is an extra expense. So the property is losing money. So some homeowners can get money actually back from the government. But yes, if you're not good with the details, some people pay more money, right? It's, I don't think it's as strict as in Seoul, Korea, where the more properties you have, the higher your taxes, things like that. It, it's a little bit different than Korea. Um, in Korea, generally you need 40 to 
of the price of a house to buy a property in Canada, usually you just need 20%. And if it's your first time house, you only need 5%. So Canada is quite different. But I'm not going to talk too much about the accounting. I just wanted to focus on the idea of you can make money outside of an old brick building that most people are usually focused on working. And so let's go through a few of these. The idea of real estate is one. We've talked about that. Um, you can make videos, sell those videos online. Those are another. Um, you want to keep going down this. I think we have, I don't know, 20 pages of examples of ways people are starting to make money through for passive income. So, uh, Hua, do you want to um, keep going down so we can identify some of these? Um, okay. Uh, just uh, slowly so we can uh, read out some of these things. Some people is just renting your apartment. Even if you don't own it, you could um, advertise it and rent your home to somebody else if that's going to be more than the rental income you have to, to pay uh, to cover your property. That's one thing. Here's another one talking about some people are making courses online and they're selling these courses online. What we're doing right now, a lot of people are actually selling this online. Um, next, the idea of just selling things. Some people are going around and they're finding all the things that people think are maybe garbage and not valuable, but if you have a good eye, I saw one person um, got something for like $100 that the owner thought was, was garbage and they're now listing it in Sotheby's auction house in London, England. And they expect to, I think, get $21 million for that uh, painting that they found at an old house. So uh, you can sell things. Yes, there's many different markets for that. Any other ideas? How else can you make <laughs> passive income online? Investing money. I investing on the stock option? Yes, invest in companies and the companies can pay you dividends and things like that. Yes, good. Anything else? Good, Hua, did you want to just read out some of these and we'll go through it relatively quickly? What are some of the ideas? Just to stimulate our brain before we get back into the, the PPT. Um, we can create an online course or um, do proofreading if you good at English and catching grammar mistakes. You can also sell photos uh, of local events. Um, if you can on photography and there are 20 side jobs to consider if you keep scrolling down to the five, for example, uh, help people write resumes or translate materials or answer questions or write travel engineering. A lot of things that you can do online to, go, uh, to earn extra income. Or uh, transcribe document test website, uh, the website tester, um, review books. Uh, do a ce celebrity impression. I don't know what that is, but... <laughs> do you have a voice that sounds like some famous movie star? Can you do a celebrity impression, Lucas? No, I definitely can't. <laughs> and what but the, right. Also, passive income could be, for example, at the moment, uh, cryptocurrency or like Bitcoin mining. A Bitcoin mining rack is not that expensive and it pays off in only a few months. I'm to say so. Yes, Bitcoin mining. You can have a computer to make uh, or software to make uh, and identify new Bitcoin and get paid for that. Yes. Any other comments? There's several here that we're showing. Um, maybe Hua, you can 
uh, get the link for this and share it in the chat so everybody can uh, take a look at it. Yeah, I already did. Great. So um, I think there's what something like um, more than 20 pages and many, many, I see three or four articles in the news almost every day talking about new ways that are, are growing, new businesses that are growing. Most of them are, are passive income type businesses. So people, why are we talking about this? We're seeing that people can make money without going to a company and they can make money without actually working. They can make passive income where it may be hard to start, but after you start, it will keep giving you money, maybe forever. That type of uh, activity can allow you to travel the world or do whatever you want if you have enough of them. And since they can um, run on their own many times, you can get it started and then make another one and then make another one, another one, another one. So thank you for showing that. Well, any questions about this before we um, go to the regular PPT slides? There's many different examples. We've only talked about a few. Any questions? Did you want us to show all of them or would you like to just go back to the regular PPTs? Going once, going twice. Uh, I just want to share my experience uh, in earning passive income and uh, doing online job to get more money even when you, you're just a student and you don't have any degree yet. So I um, rent an apartment in Australia and then with a low price and then I rent it out for other people um, with a higher price and I earn um, I don't know, around two to $300 a month from renting out my apartment. Um, so that's why I have a, a stable source of um, income from that. And I think it's very easy. I think everyone can do it. You don't have a citizenship in Australia or you don't even need to live on Australia um, in Vietnam. And uh, I think I, I also do a translating document, which earn me a lot of money. Once you get to the hustle and you know people, I think it's very easy to become an expert in maybe babysitting or <laughs> translating document or do proofreading. The clients just keep coming in. Uh, that's why I'm an undergraduate, but I still have a great source of income. Just, just sharing my experience if anyone needed. I'm not bragging or anything, so. Great, yes, I encourage you guys to, to take a look at these. There's several different links. Um, many organizations provide uh, stories about how you can get um, passive online income. Um, the idea of being selling something online, raking leaves, simple, small things, being a mock juror, um, there's babysitting, there's lots of other ideas that you can get uh, additional income, not just passive income. But one of the things that I recommend you guys to focus on the most, the website, is this growacorns.com. So um, I suggest you check out this website, growacorns.com, that has lots of ideas, lots of stories about how you can develop yourself uh, in addition to just basic um, This, oh, sorry, were you guys able to see that? Maybe not. Yeah, okay, good. So I'll go back and share more of the details for the class. So now it's time to just think of what are some of the benefits that uh, we're talking about. We're focused on getting benefits from companies, getting uh, health and safety taken care of by some other company, the usual HRM. 
what are lists? What are possible or what are popular benefits that people get from companies, from employers? Let's start thinking about the, the basics. Why work for a company? Company gives you these, but if you are working on your own, you don't have somebody else taking care of these. So what are those things that a company gives you? Yes? Uh, I think one of the most important story you know about the company is about the same skills. And I think Ahmed uh, came on it and he was working for the history time. Yes. Yes. So there's definitely retirement benefits like pension, and there's several different types of pension arrangements, social security, things like that. Yes. So um, any other things? What are some other? Good. That's good. What, what are some additional benefits? There's many benefits that you can get working for some other company. Mm, not only that you learn from your experience, but also you can network with other people to grow your own network through the company. When you work for a company, you're working with several professional people focused on that specific area that you might be interested in. And if you're working by yourself at home, it might be harder to find them. Inside a company, generally they're all in the same place and they generally all have to meet. So you can grow your network. It may be a good idea to get experience for, from a company and meet many people, exchange name cards, so that later you can grow your own business. Good, that's a good point. Belinda, you had another point? Company reputation, yes. If Yes, some people feel that if I don't have a degree from a famous university, I can't get a job. And some people think that if I don't have experience, I can't get a job. And some people think just regular experience is still not enough. I need experience from a famous company and then other people will respect me and I can get a, a better job. And so some people will get a job from these famous companies because it makes their resume look better. So they say, don't forget there is that trend that Elon Musk and several other leaders are starting to say you know, it doesn't matter what you had from before. It doesn't matter that the, the name brands, the only thing that really matters is you can do this project. You can do this task. You can do this test. You can program this thing. You can market these things. As soon as you can start showing, you can do those tasks that many people, many successful people say it's even more important than name brand experience. Okay, good. Anything else? Okay, uh, very, very good point. Um, as I just finished saying a few seconds ago, a few minutes ago, um, although I teach certain business and finance and investing courses, there's almost no textbooks and almost no universities that teach the idea of real estate rental income. They're almost all, almost all finance courses are just focused on the stock market. And I know for a fact that the stock market is more dangerous than real estate. It's a fact. And the profits from 1929 until generally now has been almost identical. So the profit is generally the same, but real estate is safer. The other aspect, as we just heard, you can meet experts. You can meet the real things that know the real ways of the game of life. And so, yes, um, Getting that experience definitely helps. Thanks. Um, anybody else wanted to say uh, another idea before we, we go on to the uh, 
categories and types of benefits? Um, I think that um, rest, if you are working for a company, they're legally required to have you work only a certain number of hours, and then you can rest. You can take a break each week. You can take a break each uh, year where they have to give you sort of vacation or time off. That's what you're talking about? Okay, good. Some, some um, typical employment usually allows you to work during the day and it allows you to have your, your dinner with your family or your loved ones. Um, you can relax at night, party at night or sleep at night. Right. If you are your own boss, sometimes you have to take that job whenever that job is available, perhaps until you get to the certain limit. Yes. Claude, did I hear you were suggesting another topic? No, uh, it was uh, for the student who who doesn't have any experience but want to get a job. Uh, I just want to say that uh, maybe you think it's difficult, but I don't think it's that difficult uh, as long as you have a um, to-do attitude, like you're willing to learn and you show them that you can, you're a quick learner. I think that maybe somebody will will be willing to give you a chance. Good. Um, very good point. No matter what you're doing, try doing it if you have some interest in it. You do not have to wait until later. Some people say you have to do this first. You have to wait until later. That's nonsense. If you have an interest, there's a very good chance you can do almost anything. Right. Um, if you are going to be working for a company, there's a variety of categories of benefits. So some are legally required, like we talked about the time. Time is legally required uh, to be managed so that you have time to rest, time for holidays. Uh, you're supposed to be able to be uh, taken care of in your retirement. Um, you're supposed to have insurance. You're supposed to have payment for time, even that's not worked. For example, if the company closes down or if the company has to take a break sometime, you are still supposed to be paid. Uh, so there's a variety of, of categories. Here's examples of uh, some benefits. The idea of social security, unemployment compensation, workers' compensation, state di disability insurance, uh, retirement, those were all legally required, retirement related. You should be able to have a pension fund. You should be able to have annuity plans or 401k. This is all in the United States. Uh, you should be able to have early retirement options where if you want to retire earlier, you can, you just don't get that full uh, retirement uh, later. Disability retirement, retirement gratuity, insurance related. Um, you can have medical insurance, accident insurance, life insurance, disability insurance, dental insurance, survivor benefits, even if your spouse is working and then they die. Payment for time not worked. That idea that you get paid for vacation, for holidays, sick leave, military leave, election, uh, birthdays. There's a variety of these details. And even other ones, the idea of company discounts. Some companies, some of the best benefits that, that I have experienced uh, when I was young, I didn't think very much about retirement. I didn't think very much about insurance. I didn't think very much about health or, or pension because as a young person, you don't need it. You're not using it. So it doesn't, you don't really notice it. But what young people did notice is sometimes if you're working for a company, the company will fly you to other places around the world. And usually if you're going for a company business uh, trip, business travel, it's pretty nice. Um, even if you're, you know, doing well financially, you don't usually want to pay for the very expensive business class seats. So why do companies do it? As Celinda was saying, often it's image oriented. The company wants people to see their company is so successful, so they're fl flying business class, uh, those type of things. Uh, another thing is companies usually have uh, connections to other companies. 
like connections with rental car companies or connections with restaurants, connections with hotels. So when you are doing anything anywhere, even on your vacation, you show your company name card and those places may give you a discount. That's kind of nice. You don't usually get that on your own. Um, so let's see, any questions about this before we see extreme examples of benefits? Any questions to start with? Going once, going twice. Okay, so let's take a look at a short video showing extreme benefits. Everybody knows Google. Um, you know Google is one of the most profitable businesses in the world. They're one of the most, they're one of the richest companies in the world. Anybody know um, how much the organization is worth? More than me. <laughs> uh, but definitely much more than two billion, or are you talking about two trillion? Trillion, huge difference, huge difference. Um, there's a lot of articles talking recently about some people know the difference between one and a million. It takes, I think, a, what somebody said something like 11 days to count from one, two, three, four, five, up to uh, um, maybe it takes uh, several hours to count to a million and then uh, 11 days to count to a billion and something like 36 years to count to a trillion. And some of these companies are $2 trillion. So it's crazy how, how big that is. Yes. So what are the benefits that, that you know of that Google has? That's not a normal life insurance retirement package. What should your company strive for? If they can be as successful as Google, and have some of the smartest minds in the world helping them work the smartest way, what should you try to do? Because many, many, many companies, they studied, they have an owner that might be, you know, 40, 50, 60 years old owner, and he learned about business 40 years ago. And so that is the old style of doing things. He hasn't learned the newest style. So his style of working and even the style of benefits that he gives to his staff are outdated. This company continuously tries to learn. I'll start. One of the things that the top companies I've worked with have, all of the top companies I've worked with, they have a very different learning attitude than regular small companies. Small companies, you go to work, you get paid, you do your job, that's it. But the big companies, they will help you learn more about anything. And often they will pay any expenses related to you learning and getting certificates or more degrees. So when I worked for a, a Samsung, they had like a, a, a library or Samsung University online that executives can learn things. Samsung helps you. Applied materials, uh, I think is even higher tech. Applied materials, it was huge. Anything you could think of. It's not just that it was available, but the executives were always talking about this. You should learn this. Take a look at this. Try this. I can get paid for this. I can get paid to go to another city to participate in this learning activity or this workshop type of programs. So uh, Google also has something like a online learning program. And it's, it's not what a lot of people are thinking of. Usually, I think most people think learning is you go to school, you go to a college, you go to a building, and that building has people walking around that you can shake hands with and teach. But that, again, is the old style. The new style is online. A lot of the online education has been funded by Google, like Coursera, Udacity, Ude uh, Udemy, uh, edX. Um, so they're giving a lot of this online education away. Any other guesses what Google may provide? I know that Google has very innovative office spaces with like lots of recreational areas for the employees to get more creative. So 
they can just take their time and do a break and play table tennis or something and they also offer that you can use some of your work time to research about your own interests so you have like i don't know maybe 10 or 20 percent of a day where you can just research about stuff that interests you and you don't really have to work on a um, project from google um so yeah that's some things that they offer yeah very big that uh, that idea of most people um in korea when i came here in 1990s the normal person was working six days a week and in vietnam six days a week is still popular many countries working six days every week you only have one day real holiday every week that's still quite popular in most of the world in the developed advanced world it's not it's just five days of work but even with google that five days a week you only have to work four and that fifth day you can use for your own interests you should be developing something you're you're interested in yourself not that your boss is telling you to do so yes that type of development is very very important let's take a look at these things snacks a Googler's health is his wealth too. Snacks and lunch are available free of cost. Food on the menu is changed on a daily basis taking care of the employee's nutrition. Cafes serve organic and healthy food varieties. Benefits for your newborn. Employees who turn parents receive benefits of $500 for their baby's food and nutrition. So mummies need not worry as Google shows its responsibility too. Play games or with pets. Google awaits you with an array of entertainment at work. There is a swimming pool, a rock climbing wall, beach volleyball area, table tennis, video games and the list goes on. If your pet is all alone at home, bring it to office and leave it at the pet's park. Laundry service and car wash. Google offers laundry services too. Dry cleaning and ironing is at the will of the employee. Free car wash service is an added advantage and free oil change as well privacy and relaxation of ease. Private cabins are available for free to spend some quality time with your loved one. There are prayer rooms for all religions as well. There is also a facility of special massage chairs to relax your muscles, gymming and more. There is a gym with every possible facility for a Googler. Regular summer camps and marathons are also a part of the company's list for great employee experience. Parking facility with no worries. There are special parking areas with free chargers for electric cars. Underground parking service is also free of cost. Just drop in your car and the keys will reach your desk. Your personalized workplace. You can decorate your desk any way you want. Couches, bean bags and comfortable chairs are available at its best. So just crash anywhere. You can practice your music skills in the music studio with electric guitars, drum sets and amplifiers. Learn and update yourself. Sitting on your relaxation chair, you can learn foreign languages at ease for free. The mobile library at the office offers you with the latest books and magazines as you will enjoy your reading experience. Office meetings. The office premises also have a leather boat with seat belts on it. So a meeting can be held in the best of comforts. Friday meetings are held where any question can be thrown at senior management while sipping free beer and wine. So we've seen a variety of different examples. Not every company is going to give you bean bags. Not every company is going to give you cafeterias. And yet in Korea, that was actually the norm many years ago because the companies were relatively poor. They didn't pay their staff very much. So they provided basic housing, like dormitory style housing with uh, cafeteria, sometimes even with clothes, because they didn't actually pay cash for the workers very much, as much as they are now. But uh, yes, nowadays, the cafeteria food, massage services, it's definitely not, um, not popular. Why do they do that then? Should you be trying to do that? The whole idea of human capital management. We're talking about benefits. Why? Should you give benefits to your staff? Why does Google go crazy with these benefits? Isn't it a waste of money? 
I think with Google, because they have so many geniuses working for them, they're trying their hardest to keep the people. And also I heard that it's almost like a Google town. So people also live in the area. They don't really leave the area. So I think they're really trying to keep their employees within the barriers and <laughs> to um, make them happy. Good. That's, that's a good point. Celinda, you had another idea? allows it allows staff to feel like they're at home and it gives them uh, it helps encourage creativity okay any other ideas maybe by having this kind of facilities a um, lot of people um, like who is very smart might want to go to this google place Sure, it, it's attracting the best of the best. And remember that the best organizations continuously learn what is new and the best. So they find out what is anybody in the world, anywhere in the world, what are they doing the best? And they check if Google can do it, if it's appropriate. There are teams of people just checking how to upgrade the company. If you're just selling gasoline, you're probably busy pumping the gas, doing some of the basic details out of business. You don't have the time to think about how to improve your business. But at this big uh, level, there's so much money that the owners that usually just take the money, they're investing it back into the business, which is helping it grow. And they're seeing that there's huge consulting companies telling them, this is a way to grow. Here's another way to grow. Here's another way to grow. The, the biggest thing is staff, your human capital is the most important. You need to not only filter through the 8 billion people in the world to find somebody to work with you, but you really need to filter. There's a lot of people that aren't good workers. They're not a good match for you. They don't match your culture. They don't match your interests. Most people, unfortunately, they feel like their job is okay, even if you survey them and they say they're unhappy with their boss, they're unhappy with the environment. They, they keep it because they think that's normal. And so as an HR specialist, as a human capital management specialist, you should be aware that not just that company is good, but the people working there, some of them are the only reason that company is surviving. And so you, you don't just do your job as HR, listening to your boss and doing whatever the management says. Try to give the deserved respect to the workers because good people working, it's not just hard to to find, to make a job ad and, and, um, and interview people and hire people, but maybe one in 10 or one in uh, 50 or one in a hundred are really, really good. And those individual people are the reason your organization can grow number one, but also be a good environment. If you do have a good environment with other people around you, that could be very rare. So cherish the people that you're serving and working with, with HRM. Um, please be aware of that. Google understands that. And so they're, they're not just researching, what do you like? Okay, we'll give it. What do you like? We'll give it. Okay, what do you like? We'll give it. It's not just that. They're also finding that the old style of just paying cash is not attractive it's not the main thing anymore. They want other things. They want other things that you can't just uh, describe. You can't just pay easily. You need to have that idea of a, a, a click or a almost a cult type environment. Get people together so that they're so connected to this environment that they're not as interested in leaving. The, all of their friends, their family, everything's connected here, so they don't want to leave that. That type of environment, it is very important. 
we can go on and there's many, many different uh, ideas. Social security, categories of social security. There, there's many things. Uh, problems for social security. Uh, unemployment compensation, that's a, a different benefit. Or um, eligibility, eligibility requirements for, for compensation. So there's many things. We are almost out of time. We only have about five minutes left. I can, I'm going to fly through many. You don't need to read them. I just want you to get to know the titles so that you're thinking about them. A lot of these are just focused on the United States. So why I'm doing this fast is I would like you guys to talk more. So far, I'm talking the most. And no one can tell you what's best for you unless you do a lot more talking. So if I want to help you guys, you guys talk more. You guys have already researched something you're interested in for many months. Don't just think of presenting to get the final marks to graduate. Think of your class project as a way for you to develop your specialization. Where you present your project with us, we can help you present it better and better and better so you are a better specialist. So um, if you guys have uh, comments or suggestions, if you want to reserve a time now, start talking about that. Otherwise, I'm just going to start listing these other things. So unemployment um, compensation is one thing. Workers' compensation. Uh, there's many different features of workers' compensation. Then there's um, many common features of workers' compensation. Types of disability. Um, Company-sponsored retirement plans. The idea of vesting and um, getting benefits from companies with vesting. Defined benefit plans. Defined contribution plans, uh, employer sponsored simple IRAs, uh, Income Security Act, the uh, ER ERISA, the Employer Employee Retirement Income Security Act. This is uh, specifically for United States, but there's many things here. Um, there's laws related to it that companies need to follow. Um, Pre-retirement planning services. A lot of people in Canada, they seem to think more about retirement than they, they seem in other countries, but still in most countries, people don't think very much about retirement. Some good companies can help you start learning how to invest. They can uh, help you learn how to uh, retire. They can teach you how you don't have to work for the company anymore. Some of them, even after you retire, have programs to teach you how you can get paid from still sharing that information with the company, even though you don't have to have that nine to five job. So of course there's the health insurance uh, details, lots of information related to um, affordable care acts, um, health maintenance, Preferred provider uh, programs, um, dental insurance, accident and disability insurance, um, payment for time not worked. Uh, more details of, of like floating holidays. There's several different examples here. Um, any questions about the general idea of benefits? What are they, number one? Number two, um, which one's better, which one's worse? Uh, if you're going to be working for a big corporate company or if you're going to have your own business, managing your own staff, that aspect of human capital management. Any questions about that before we get into the, the very last slide talking about the um, health and safety? Dad, any questions for you? Zephyr, any questions for you about this or your final projects? Going once. 
No, it's okay. Okay. So the idea of the uh, health and safety, of course, you guys are aware of companies are supposed to take care of your, your health when you're a regular full-time employee of that organization. Um, obviously, you're not going to have that when you're working on your own. How are you going to do that? Some people know that health insurance in the United States is so expensive, sorry, health care in the United States is so expensive, if you don't have a company job, you go bankrupt. So why should you ever think of working for yourself? Any idea? Zach, what do you think? Mm. I don't know. So you can't think of any reasons why you should have your own business? Okay, let's talk more about that. What about... To um, be independent, maybe? To be independent, yes. If you are your own boss, you can work whenever you choose to work. Great, you don't have to do that Monday to Friday, nine to five for a company anymore. Okay, that's one aspect. What about the idea of people work for companies because if you get sick in the United States, the company will pay for it. And I can't afford to pay for a doctor or hospital myself. Some people working for hospitals, sometimes they don't go to the doctor because they think they can't afford certain things. So should you think of working for yourself, having your own company, managing your own staff? Have you guys heard how much it costs to, to pay for certain things in the United States? Some people may break a bone or break a rib. Um, breaking a rib is actually, unfortunately, quite popular. And the people that do break your rib, many of them in the United States, choose not to go to the hospital and they don't go see a doctor because they think they can't afford it even though their rib is broken. So should you risk not being able to have that company health plan? The idea usually if you're working on your own, you are setting your own pay. Whatever you work for, you get to keep. Usually when you're working, most of the money that you earn goes to the company and you just get to keep a small amount. So if you are working, all of that stays with you and you can use that to buy your own health insurance, right? So don't just think of that money as bonus and spend it all. Think of that money in the big picture with all of the benefits, all of the applications, and you can get insurance and benefits on your own. So um, there, there's lots of different types of uh, health assurances, um, even record keeping, uh, privacy details, the idea of uh, health, health, it's not just medical health, but sometimes it's mental health and the, the privacy acts. Some companies need to keep like this university, I think they say that whatever you're writing down, all of your assignments, the university is supposed to keep for seven years if it's related to your grade. I've seen some professors panicking because they failed the student 11 years ago and the parents came to say they want to know why that student failed 11 years after the student failed. Wow. So make sure you're thinking of that stuff. Most people, especially students, they go through a class, they finish the class, the, the files go in the garbage, they don't think of it anymore. If you are a business, you can't just do that. You have to start thinking of the long term. 
what is involved with other people, you have to protect it. Even if you think it's garbage, you need to keep it, not for 11 years, but sometimes five years is popular, seven years is popular. Um, I've been with some universities where they rent huge warehouses with computer servers and um, spaces just to save thousands and thousands of school notes, class notes, student exams. So if you are your own company, you might want to start thinking about how are you going to do those things. If you don't keep it, you may be responsible for those things. So that idea of record keeping. So there, there's lots of things. We're going to be able to talk more about this on Thursday. Uh, before we finish, I just wanted to end with this idea that, again, you, you should have your name reserved for a certain time and share the file that you want to share in advance. Here is ideal and here. Uh, during class, I, let's see if has anybody uploaded details. Um, Pia, thank you for uh, sharing some things, but uh, all of you should be sharing your files online. Don't just share it, but seek comments from other people on how you can improve. Forget class, forget your grade, forget the, what you think the class grade is a huge benefit for you. In my experience, this class grade is very small. There's other things that you're getting benefits by doing this. Hopefully um, appreciate that networking with other people, sharing these comments will help you more. With that said, thank you very much, folks. Any questions? No questions? Okay, uh, I guess that's it.